Number one, ambient occlusion and override in clay renders. Don't go through your scene assigning a clay material to every single object one at a time. It's a huge waste of time and there's a much easier way around it. Instead, make your clay material, give it a fake user so it doesn't disappear, then go into the view layer settings, open override, and add your material there. Now it's overriding every single other material in the scene, and if you delete it, everything goes back to how it was. Oh, uh, one thing I almost forgot. Go into your clay material, add an ambient occlusion node, and connect it to the color. Now your simple clay material will do a much better job of showing the fine details in your render. Number two, render to image sequences and not to video. I see a lot of artists rendering straight to video formats. I get it, it's tempting, but it comes with pretty significant drawbacks. If your render dies in the middle, you lose everything you've rendered so far. Whereas if you use frame sequences, you can pick up where you left off by simply turning off the overwrite setting and keeping your output the same. With video, you can also introduce encoding issues and errors that you simply would not have with frames. Number three, use persistent data to speed up animation rendering. In the performance tab of cycles, there's a small but powerful setting called use persistent data. Persistent data takes all of the data that is static frame to frame, i.e. objects that don't move, textures that don't change, etc., and caches it so that you don't have to load it onto the GPU's onboard memory every single frame. That's a smaller savings on a single frame, but it really adds up after hundreds or even thousands of frames. Number four, turn off motion blur to speed up rendering and add it back in post. This one you'll have to figure out on a case-by-case -case basis, but in Cycles and EV, motion blur increases render time fairly significantly. More so in Cycles than EV, but it definitely does in both. In some scenes, you can't get around the need for motion blur and realistic motion blur, but in scenes where the motion blur is slow and the blur is very subtle, I highly recommend rendering without it and adding it back in After Effects, Resolve, or your compositor of choice. Probably not Adobe, given what they've been up to lately. <coughs> Number five. Control your render quality and speed with adaptive sampling. It's important to understand how the noise threshold setting works in cycles. Effectively, it's setting a minimum value for how much noise is allowed in your final render. What that means is as the renderer works on your image, areas that fall below that threshold stop being sampled. This is why in the current version of cycles, the first few samples can take a lot longer and then they start to speed up as the image resolves. The renderer is actively reallocating compute to the dirty areas of the image as other areas fall below the noise threshold. That's it for this one. Um, if you like this, throw a like on it. Don't forget to subscribe or you'll miss other tips videos. And remember, never stop learning.